Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I hope that you can hear me. Uh, please uh, write in the chat just yes in order to understand if you can hear me. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the today webinar in the field diagnostic, the Gini and the Lamp, organized by the Emphasis Project. This is the first of a series of webinars organized by the project. Uh, I'm Silvia Anastasia, and I'm working at Moverim, one of Emphasis partners, and, and I will be your host for the event today. Um, before we get started, I would like to go over a few items so you know how to participate to this event. Um, we have uh, taken a screenshot of uh, an example of the ATD interface. I hope that you can uh, see. You should see something that looks like this on your computer desktop. You are listening and using your computer speaker system or your headphones. Pay attention to have the uh, speaker symbol in green on the top. Uh, if you have any problems, uh, pre please write uh, during uh, all the webinar to me as a private uh, chat or in the main chat. Uh, you can also refer to my colleagues uh, from Moveri, Martina and Isabel, and we are going to help you if possible. Um, we'll have also the opportunity today uh, to submit some questions to the presenter. Uh, and you can use the chat. Uh, you can use the chat in the end of the presentation. So if you want to uh, talk do, during the question and answer session, you have the possibility to activate your microphone. So just raise your hand with the small man that you can see in the interface at the top. Basically, here you have to find a small man at the top. Uh, you can follow um, uh, our events and FASIS activities uh, also on our Twitter account. So please um, refer to at uh, Emphasis Project or on our Facebook page uh, that's called Emphasis Project. Now, I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Uh, Edward Haynes uh, from Ferra Science. Some words about him. He completed his PhD at Ferra in the genomics and epidemiology of a bacterial disease of only beings, during which time he used genomic data and developed a type uh, scenes for a causative pathogen that is now in routine use in the national B unit. Since then, uh, he uh, has been working at JORA, a FERA Food Standard Agency Fellow, to develop the FERA's capabilities in genomic epidemiology of uh, born, foodborne pathogens of humans. Edward is also developing and interested in microbiological communities analysis, for example, in relation to anaerobic digesters. He is going to um, say more words about him. Uh, and uh, now I will give the floor to him so he will be able to uh, give uh, his presentation. Thank you, Edward, to join us today. Thank you very much. Sylvia for that introduction and thank you everyone for attending this webinar Please, the floor is yours. Uh, on the emphasis project and on lab technologies. Um, we're going to give you a brief introduction to uh, one strand of the emphasis project and a little introduction to LAMP and how we're using it within the project. So emphasis stands for effective management of pests and harmful alien species integrated solutions and we're using LAMP to develop assays to a number of different important plant pathogens. So to start off with, when we talk about LAMP, we're referring to a technology called loop-mediated isothermal amplification. And we're going to go into more detail later about how exactly that works. But first of all, why are we interested in this particular technology? Well, there's a number of features to the technology that make it appropriate. Uh, first of all, it's got a very short reaction time in the order of approximately 30 minutes. It has uh, great sensitivity, so it's able to detect realistic levels of the pathogen, and it's got good specificity, so it can be designed to a specific pathogen, and these are similar to other lab-based methods. It uh, doesn't involve any thermal cycling, which means it all takes place at one temperature, and you can therefore use quite simple equipment 
Uh, it's very tolerant of chemicals that might inhibit the reaction. So that means that we can use quite crude or quite straightforward ways to process our sample and to extract the DNA that we're interested in. Um, these simplified extraction procedures mean that the chance of making any errors in sample handling are greatly reduced. And the way LAMP works is it gives us a very uh, clear or unambiguous signal when it's detected the pattern of interest. So it's very straightforward to interpret the results. And all of these benefits add up together to mean that LAMP is really appropriate for using in the field. So it's, it's quick, it's sensitive, it's specific, and it's easy to use. And that can be taken out and used in the field by non-experts to diagnose and detect diseases. And those are exactly the sort of applications that we at Ferro and other emphasis partners are using the LAMP for, uh, where we need to make uh, uh, perform de detection at the point at which decisions are made. So a good example of this is uh, inspectors. Ferro works with a number of plant health inspectors at, for example, Heathrow Airport to use LAMP technology to detect um, important exotic pathogens before they're introduced to the country. Um, this might be also used by agronomists to confirm pathogen identity identity within the field so that management decisions can be made. And another example would be uh, seed testers. So if you need to certify that your seeds are free from a pathogen, you might want a, a rapid uh, sensitive assay that you can use at the point where your seeds have been collected or processed. In terms of uh, the end user and how they would perform LAMP, uh, it's really a, a straightforward procedure. So this is an example where we've got an orange here that's infected with what we think is citrus black spot disease. Uh, you would simply take your putatively infected orange, excise one of the lesions that you want to examine with a sterile scalpel, and then put it into a tube containing an alkali buffer and a ball bearing. This tube is then sealed and shaken to disrupt the cells of uh, the orange and any potential pathogen that's in there and release the DNA, which is what we want to detect. We then take a sample from this tube and aliquot it out into these uh, strips containing pre-mixed uh, reagents or reaction ingredients. And these are then transferred into, in this example, the Genie 2 machine. So this is the machine that we use to perform LAMP under field conditions. And then finally, uh, when you start the machine running, after about 10 to 15 minutes of this particular reaction, uh, you get a really clear, unambiguous signal that the reaction has worked. So you can see on the graph, after about 10 minutes, you get a real peak in fluorescence, so uh, emitted light from the reaction that the machine is able to detect and tell you, yes, you've got your pathogen there, or if it's absent, no, you haven't. So you can see from the end user's point of view, running a lamp assay uh, in the field is really pretty straightforward. And that's uh, a great advantage for lamp when we, talk, when we want to bring it out to non-specialist users, as we do under the emphasis project. So um, right now, I'm going to pass you over to a colleague of mine, uh, Dr. Jenny Tomlinson, who is an expert in the design and uh, optimization of LAMP assays. And she's going to go a bit into the more detailed underlying biochemistry of how the LAMP reaction works. So Jenny. OK, thanks very much, Ed. So, um, yes, I'm going to uh, explain a bit about uh, the mechanism of how a lamp reaction works. So, uh, the key uh, features of a lamp reaction uh, which allow application uh, to take place are uh, the primers. So, we have three pairs of primers in a lamp reaction. In a PCR reaction, then we uh, typically just have one pair of primers, but in lamp, we have three pairs in total. And we also use a BST DNA polymerase, so that's a DNA polymerase with strand displacing activity. And uh, it's the design of the primers and the uh, specific activity of the uh, DNA polymerase uh, combine to allow the reaction to uh, proceed. So if we think more generally about uh, how DNA is amplified in any kind of amplification reaction, uh, including PCR, uh, we have a double stranded uh, uh, DNA target uh, primers, which we've designed to be specific to the thing that we're interested in, uh, bind to the target DNA. Uh, polymerase extends from the three prime end of the um, primer. And in PCR, we use a polymerase which has uh, exonuclease activity. And this is how LAMP differs from uh, PCR, is that rather than exonuclease activity, we use a polymerase which has strand displacing activity. 
So uh, when the polymerase encounters something bound in front of it, rather than uh, degrading the um, oligo that it's coming up to, it displaces the strand um, and removes it from uh, the double-stranded structure. So uh, the primers, which um, are critical to LAMP, are um, called the internal primers, and they're actually made up of two different primer binding sites. Um, and the, the key uh, feature of a LAMP reaction is uh, it's suggested by the name loop mediated isothermal amplification. Uh, what we need is primers which will generate an amplification product which contains single stranded loops. So, in order for uh, primers to bind and be extended in an amplification reaction, we need those primers to be able to bind to the target DNA. And in a PCR reaction, that happens by uh, thermal denaturation of the double stranded target. So heating up the sample uh, denatures the double stranded DNA and the primers can then bind to the um, individual strands of the target DNA. In LAMP, because it's an isothermal method, we're not a thermal cycling, so we don't heat up the sample to um, allow primers to bind. The, um, the basic principle is that we're trying to generate a structure which contains uh, single stranded loops and primers can bind to those loops because by definition they're single stranded. And the way that's achieved is um, using these internal primers, which actually consist of two different regions. So uh, the three prime, prime end of the primer um, binds to the target sequence. And then the um, five prime uh, section of the internal primer is um, the same as uh, the downstream, um, uh, a sequence slightly downstream of the um, primer binding region. So this primer um, will bind at, it, at its three prime end and be extended by the um, DNA polymerase. Um, as well as the primer um, design and orientation, the other thing that allows loops to be formed is the strand displacement activity of the DNA polymerase. So as well as the internal primers, we also have external primers, which um, bind um, just behind the internal primers and extension of those primers allows the strand displacement activity to displace the extension product of the internal primers. So you can see here the orange primer is the um, external primer that's bound, it's uh, being extended by the polymerase and the strand displacement activity is displacing the extension product of the internal primer. Um, and you can see that structure here um, at the bottom of the slide, uh, that's the displaced strand. And because we've uh, designed that to have a um, five prime, that primer, the internal primer has a five prime section, which um, matches the uh, target sequence. When uh, the extension product is displaced, we have uh, self complementarity in that structure. So um, you can see here the uh, light green and the dark green sections are uh, complementary to, to each other. We have a product which um, has been displaced, which contains a self-complementary region, and that will uh, loop round and form a single-stranded loop. And that single-stranded loop is now able to uh, behave as a uh, primer binding site in the absence of thermal denaturation. And that's the principle of how LAMP works is that we're using strand displacement and a particular orientation of uh, primer binding sites such that we generate these intermediate products which contain single stranded uh, loops where additional primers can bind. Uh, thank you, Sylvia. Sorry. Um, Okay, okay. Um, so uh, this happens at the, uh, with the forward primers in the lamp reaction and also the reverse primers. So we end up with this um, dumbbell-like structure which contains um, a linear section and um, at either end there's a single-stranded loop. So we uh, generate product which contains uh, multiple uh, single-stranded primer binding sites. Um, the products that we get in a LAMP reaction are much more complicated than the products in a, a PCR reaction, although conceptually it's very similar that we're designing primers and getting amplification of a target sequence. But the actual products contain a lot of secondary structure because we've got these double-stranded linear regions and um, inter 
interspersed with these, we've got the um, single-stranded loops. And uh, the product of a single lamp reaction will contain multiple different structures, which all consist of uh, units of the same target sequence uh, joined together in an alternately oriented pattern. So we have one uh, in the sense orientation, followed by one in the anti-sense orientation, and then another one in the sense orientation, and so on. And we have some product which is made up of just one copy of the target sequence, some made up of two, and some made up of many. So we have, um, if the target sequence is 300 bases long, we'll have some product is 300 bases, some is 600, some is 900, and some will be 30,000 bases long. So we have um, a massive amount of product um, of all different sizes, but it's all made up of units of the same um, target sequence. And um, Ed mentioned earlier the uh, use of the Genie 2. So um, most of the lamp that we do here um, at Ferra and um, within the Emphasis project, we're using uh, the Genie 2 instrument, which is a real-time lamp platform. So um, in the lamp reaction, we also incorporate some um, fluorescent dye, which uh, intercalates into the double-stranded DNA and fluoresces. So this is a dye which is not fluorescent in the presence of single-stranded DNA or small amounts of DNA, but after amplification, uh, when there's large amounts of double-stranded DNA, the dye intercalates between the two strands of the product and it fluoresces. So um, what we actually observe is um, as we monitor the fluorescence over time in a positive reaction, we get an increase in fluorescence as the amplification occurs. So in this slide, you can see a negative reaction is the blue line, so there's no increase in fluorescence uh, during the reaction. And uh, in a positive reaction, we have this exponential increase in fluorescence, which um, mirrors the amplification of the target sequence. Um, so the Genie 2 is the instrument that we uh, predominantly use currently, um, which is uh, an instrument made by um, OptiGene. Um, this instrument has two sample blocks, so you can test 16 reactions at once, and it's operated from a touch screen um, and is battery powered, so it's, um, uh, it's uh, suitable for use outside uh, laboratory um, facilities. Uh, we also uh, have the Genie 3, which is uh, the next generation of Genie. This is a smaller instrument, and uh, as a result, you can only run eight reactions, but this has some additional um, functionality, uh, including active cooling instead of the forced air cooling that we have in the Genie 2. Uh, we can monitor two different colours of fluorescence, um, and in a similar way to the Genie uh, 2, we have um, uh, the battery, uh, so it's uh, suitable for use outside um, the laboratory. Uh, another instrument which will be available next year is the Genie HT, which is more of a, a lab version of the Genie. So this uh, is a similar instrument, but allows us to um, process uh, 12 strips of tubes at once, so 96 tubes. So that's like a, a higher throughput um, Genie instrument. So I'm going to hand back over to Ed now, who's going to talk about some of the pathogens which we're considering in the Emphasis project. Well, thank you very much, Jenny, for that uh, incredibly interesting and informative introduction to um, the actual molecular basis of LAMP. So as, as Jenny pointed out, I'm now going to talk to you a little bit more about the specific interests of the Emphasis project. Um, so Emphasis is a four-year project, and one strand of it is involved in developing around 20 different LAMP uh, reactions, or diff different LAMP tests, that will be uh, developed and uh, optimised and then put into kits suitable for an end user to use and then made commercially available. And there's a few different emphasis partners who are interested in different um, pathogens. Ferra will be involved primarily in looking at bacterial pathogens or insect pests. NIAB is primarily interested in fungi on arable crops and Agrinova is primarily interested in fungi on non-arable crops. Uh, so examples of the kind of crops and pathogens that we're interested in um, here you've got potato, and we're interested in developing assays to, for example, uh, verticillin longisporum or alternaria alternata, which can cause black spot. Um, oilseed rape, where we're interested in uh, Leptospheria biglobosa or Leptospheria maculans, which can cause black leg disease. Um, but ferra, with the bacterial pathogens, um, here we've got examples where both the potato and the citrus are infected with Liberobacter. You can see the citrus has this. Uh, characteristic asymmetrical morphology and the potato when cooked develops this characteristic uh, striped or zebra chip appearance and in the middle you can see the olives uh, are infected with xylella and the entire uh, crop has been uh, basically killed off 
and uh, Agrinova, um, some of the organisms and crops of interest are uh, horticultural crops, so lettuces or salads, which might be affected with, for example, Fusarium oxysporum, or um, tree fruits or pines, uh, which I'll go into a little bit more detail of now. So uh, an interesting example of uh, a timber crop pathogen would be Heteropsidium irregulare. This is a major fungal pathogen of pines in North America, which was accidentally introduced into central Italy uh, during the Second World War. It's hypothesized that this happened during uh, the transfer of non-treated infected wood um, from America to Italy as part of the war effort. This species has now become invasive in Italy and is currently distributed in pine stands along over 100 kilometers of coastline uh, of central Italy, including the Rome area. And the disease can cause a number of distinct disease syndromes, including uh, root rot, butt rot, reduced growth, and even mortality of host trees. And as a consequence of this invasiveness and severe disease uh, syndromes, it's been recently included in the A2 ECHO list of organisms uh, recommended for regulation all over Europe. So you can see that an invasive uh, exotic pathogen that's been introduced to part of Europe and is now um, recommended for regulation across Europe is a, a great target for a rapid assay where we can detect the presence of the pathogen before it becomes a major problem, before it's killing off uh, or becoming established in an area, and we can take appropriate remedial action. Uh, another example would be uh, Monolinium fructicola. This is a fungal disease that causes brown rot of peaches and other stone fruits, and it's an extremely serious disease of stone fruits worldwide. Um, the fungus attacks uh, flowers and mature fruits, and these infected fruits will eventually dry up and turn into these mummy-like structures, which will serve as overwintering reservoirs. Again, it's another quarantine pathogen. It's on the FOA list too. And these are pathogens where we need to be able to detect its presence before it's causing these symptoms so we can undertake eradications. Um, as you can see in the, the photo in the bottom middle, these trays of peaches have only been exposed to the pathogen five days ago and they're already ruined. So rapid uh, detection and treatment or eradication of the pathogen is, is why we need these rapid molecular tests. So there are a number of steps involved in developing and then implementing a, a lamp assay. You have to uh, identify a specific gene, um, something that's uh, present only in or specific to the pathogen that you're interested in, and then design all of the primers that Jenny was talking about earlier. You'll then optimize the lamp reaction conditions, so get it working in the best possible way. Uh, validate that it is specific to your pathogen of interest and sensitive enough to using field conditions. Um, you'll also have to design at some point an internal control assay so that you can tell that uh, your lamp reaction is working even if you're not detecting any of the pathogen so you can verify that, that a subject is negative. And then you need to test it on field samples. So a number of stages to the design have been implemented for different um, pathogens of interest during the emphasis project. This is an example using the one of the pathogens we talked about earlier, Heteropsidium irregulare, um, where to design uh, genes for the assay, or to detect genes that could be used for assay design. Whole genome sequencing and whole genome comparative analysis was performed between Heteropsidium irregulare and closely related species Heteropsidium anosum. This was used to detect genes or regions that were present only in the target organism. So a number of potential um, sites of interest in irregulare were identified and lamp primers were designed to these sites and two most promising ones, uh, one was the region between two genes and one was the calmodulin gene, are being taken forward for optimization and validation. So the next steps are optimization, so getting this reaction working in the best, uh, the best possible way under the best conditions, um, verifying the specificity of the assay, so that'll be um, testing it on more pathogens than just uh, H. irregulare or H. anosum and validating its sensitivity. So uh, what level can we detect the pathogen at using this assay? Another assay that's uh, slightly further along this uh, line at the moment is um, an assay for Leptospheria maculans. So this is where we're testing um, against um, both the target, so a range of different samples of the target organism and a range of non-target organisms. And you can see in the graph on the bottom left where we've got this clear and obvious um, lines the increase in um, fluorescent activity, we can see that the different uh, samples of the Leptospheria maculans are all coming up positive for this assay. And where the lines are flatlining, so where we're not getting any detection, that's where the non target organisms are not coming up positive for this assay. So it, it's uh, demonstrating the specificity 
of the asset to the particular patching of interest. And then after those steps, the final step is uh, assay validation. So this is an assay that we've been developing at Ferra uh, for Candidatus liberibacter asiaticus, where we, we test the assay against um, that organism, but against a range of other related bacteria. And you can see they're all coming up negative. And then we also test it against the dilution series of, uh, of the DNA of that particular pathogen to see how sensitive it is. So whether we can detect it under kind of sorts of levels that the pathogens can be present at in the field. And then the next step is to test this against actual field samples. So here's a kind of update on at what stage the emphasis project is at for uh, the various pathogens that we're interested in. So all these pathogens um, across the three emphasis partners who are involved in LAMP have had uh, targets identified, have had assays designed and tested on DNA, and then they're all at different stages of testing against infected samples and validation. So by the end of the project, all of these pathogens will have had their assays uh, validated to EPO standards and um, produced into commercial kits for use by end users. So to conclude, um, that was sort of a, a whistle-stop tour of LAMP and the Emphasis Project, but I hope we've demonstrated that LAMP is a sensitive, uh, specific and rapid uh, DNA amplification method. And when combined with the Genie platform, which is a, an easy to use portable platform. Uh, I hope that you can hear me. We just lost you. Yes, hello, Sylvia. Apologies for that. Uh, yeah, technical no problem. problems at our... No problem. There we go, all back. Okay. Okay, well, uh, apologies for that, everybody. Um, but as it happened, it occurred right at the end of the presentation anyway. Um, so I was just wrapping up by saying that LAMP is a specific and sensitive and uh, non time consuming method of uh, amplifying DNA targets. And when combined with the Genie platform, it's something that we can easily uh, take out into the field for non experts to use. As part of the Emphasis project, we're developing LAMP kits for a range of plant pathogens, around 20 pathogens. Uh, these kits will be validated to FI standards and then available commercially from Optigene. Uh, so that will be one of the main outputs of this strand of the Emphasis project. So thank you very much for your time. Again, apologies for the last minute hitch. Um, we're very happy to take any questions you might have now, or alternatively, you can go to the Emphasis project website or email us if you have any questions after the presentation. So thank you very much for your time.